so this is a case of a Sturg Weber syndrome it's a very rare syndrome of facial deformity as you can see in the picture she has a vascular lesion on her right side of the cheek chin as well as her forehead are the mri images of the young girl we saw earlier with Sturg Weber syndrome so i would like to draw your attention to the uh, axial slices of the mri so these are our cost we have done some mock surgery and i'm going to try it up So this is immediately after we have done the procedure. She reported to us with the complaint of facial asymmetry and swellings and uh, discolorations over the left side of face mostly. This is a case of Sturg Weber syndrome. So in this syndrome the patient will have a vascular lesion on the face. they will also have some vision problem due to glaucoma she also has uh, because of that she doesn't have vision on her right side she only has a partial vision on the left side she is able to see from her left eye only and also she has some occlusal discrepancy i i'm going to show you inside of her mouth okay, open your mouth so you can clearly see that her lower jaw arch is collapsed and you can see our upper jaw the teeth are irregular and it's more wide when she close can you close also this is a challenging case because she all, she has some vascular lesions on her upper jaw we have done some mock surgery for this patient we're going to do orthognathic surgery as well as excision of this vascular lesion in one surgery uh, so what we have done for this surgery on table is that we have excised the cheek hemangioma also the lip hemangioma giving her a symmetry as possible also we have done lefort one osteotomy that is the osteotomy surgery that is done in the upper jaw we have taken it up to reduce the vertical maxillary axis also you can see her chin is way too behind it is short we have done uh, augmentation or advancement genioplasty to give her a good projection so previous reports clinical examination and radiological analysis showed us that uh, she has something called the stooch weber syndrome wherein the blood vessels of one side of face has overgrown causing the tissues on the side to be equally overgrown so if you see the left side of face when compared to the right side of face there's a swelling in a cheek involving the upper lip and lower lip and uh, uh, Can you please smile for me a little bit? If you see her upper jaw is also slightly deviated. There is an overgrowth of a maxilla on the left side, which has affected the shape of her face, including the lower third. So for her today, we will be doing a combination of soft tissue and hard tissue procedures. We'll be debulking her excess cheek and upper lip. We'll be addressing the uh, skeletal abnormality by doing a lefo and osteotomy. Try we'll try and correct the. canting in her skull base and in her upper jaw so it is going to be a, a combination of procedures uh, i will join uh, I'll, i'll join back with you a little while with our mri reports see the extent of the lesion starting from almost near the infraorbital rim region on the left side and as it comes down you can see the increase in the size of the lesion and it it it, it even towards the level of the maxilla and mandible the 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 lesion spreads even a little posteriorly involving the entirety of the cheek and if we come down we can see the lesion has developed to almost to the level of the chin and a slightly beneath it we can appreciate the extent on this section better this is the coronal slices so if you see the bulk of the tissue on the right side and the left side we can see a clear increase in the bulk on the uh, left side and in fact if you take a closer look at the bones here there is an increased size of the maxillary sinus and the maxillary bones which are a consequence of such uh, pathological changes so we are ready for three minutes we are avoiding succinyl choline for this patient because an increase in intraocular tension can be very dangerous for this girl so we are plan to avoid uh, succinyl choline
the planned excision of the low lip. Uh, this is the hemangiomatous lip that's really swollen and deformed. So we'll be doing the soft tissue work first before we embark on the a bony procedure to get a balance of the lower jaw and the chin. Do anything with the discoloration, but you can see the facial balance. Look where the lip is, how the lips don't close. Huge asymmetry with the chin, with the nose, with the lips, with the cheek, all the way up to the zygomatic bone and the arch on the left side. So this is after accessing some of the lesions from the lower lip and from the cheek and also working on the patient's upper and lower jaw and cheek. You see there was a large lesion totally disfiguring the face and the lower lip as well you can show the side view. So you can see, turn it around. This way. So yeah, you have the right view yeah. So you can see this. That was a huge lower lip lesion and the chin missing. And now you can see here the chin has come up, the lip has gone down. Uh, it's, it's way better. It was still not 100 percent as you can see. But these kind of patients, we can only take them up the ladder of facial aesthetics and facial proportions one step at a time and we want to tackle this arteriovenous malformation right now. So it's one week following her surgery now. You can see almost 70 to 80 percent of the swelling has come down. She still has some edema on the operated side. So this was a vascular lesion that we have taken out. This is stitches which are going to be removed in another two days. Also the swelling from the chin, the resection of the lesion from the lower lip, everything is settling up and she is good to go home uh, by tomorrow. Thank you.